So good afternoon, um, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are joining us from today. It's a great privilege to introduce you all to this pre-course information session on the postgrad diploma in digital business. This is one of our most popular programs. I'm just going to wait for just a few moments before we get underway to see the numbers um, coming in today. And then we will get started with the uh, one hour session, which will um, orientate you around the course itself and how this operates and the content. So we'll start just in a minute or so. I'll just write a quick welcome in the chat. While I'm, um, while I'm doing that, perhaps you could just put in the chat um, where you are dialing in from today. So I can see uh, in that for myself. So where in the world are you? Please just put that in the chat for all panelists. So we've got Mumbai, UK, India, uh, Ernest in the Philippines, welcome, uh, Switzerland, Malaysia, Cyprus, South Africa, Saudi Arabia. Uh, these are all countries I've worked in and with in the last 12 months. Brazil, indeed, I did a big workshop for a client in Brazil yesterday. South Africa, Saudi Arabia, I'm doing a program for some uh, a client there in the next three days. Um, Peru, South Africa, so a broad range for multiple markets. Great to see you all, very welcome. And we're looking forward to the session today. So let's get uh, underway with, with the basics. I'm sure you're familiar with Zoom. I'm sure you uh, know how the platform works. So just a reminder, please keep yourselves on mute unless you're speaking, but it would be great to have some questions coming through on the, uh, on the chat. Indeed, use the Q&A if you wish, and our friends in program support will help me to uh, answer those as we go through the program. And make sure if you are using the chat that you are using all panelists and attendees so everyone can see your question and the responses I will also share uh, on there if I don't do it verbally. Um, head over to the chat, there you go. All panelists and attendees, please. And thanks for letting us know where you are coming in from today. So what we're going to do in this session, um, we've got quite a bit of ground to cover. First of all, an introduction to the faculty, uh, some information about emeritus, the business, the methodology around how we deliver this and other programs, some information about the sorts of people who come on this course, where do they come from and what do they bring to the programme, a bit of information about the course leaders and the faculty, this is one of the courses that I lead for Emeritus, um, and then we're going to look at the programme itself, an overview of the diploma, the modules, the webinars, the learning platform itself that we use to deliver this programme, and then some logistics stuff at the end, the fee, the application, the deadline, and then we'll take Q&A as we go through. If we need to, I'm very happy to take questions as we go through, and it might be pragmatic for us to stop and take some of those questions while they're fresh in your minds, rather than wait until the very end. So just a very quick introduction. Um, why am I doing this program? My name is Rob Thurner. I'm a digital marketing specialist and trainer. Uh, I work with clients across the world. Our main focus is the Middle East, Asia Pacific, but as I said earlier, we're also working in uh, South America and uh, across Europe. And we focus on digital transformation, e-commerce, user experience, mobile marketing, all aspects of strategy and delivery. Helping with journeys, customer journeys, improved customer experience, and of course, commerce, digital commerce, whether that's on mobile, on laptop, or indeed on social channels. I run a business called Burn the Sky. This is a digital strategy and training business, and we serve clients uh, globally. And I'm very proud to be working with our partners at Emeritus. We've been working with them for four years now, delivering a number of programs. I'm also a lead trainer for the Google Digital Academy, 
and I'm a consultant with the London Institute of Banking and Finance. That's a big sector of expertise for me and for our business. And our clients include, and you've got some examples there, the Abu Dhabi uh, Commercial Bank, also first uh, FAB in, in that part of the world, American Express, Eti Salat, Google, GSK, HSBC, John Lewis, L'Oreal Nestle, um, I should add Colgate Palmolive to that, Vodafone VW Group. So a broad range of clients from multiple sectors. I've also written three books, three best practice books, uh, specifically around mobile strategy and mobile commerce, which of course is all rather important today. So about Emeritus. Emeritus is a business which has grown very, very rapidly uh, based on a brilliant idea that our two founders um, developed, one a Harvard, the other an INSEAD alumni. And the idea is to take the world's best university programs and deliver those online for the people, the, the tens of thousands of people, indeed 66,000 people that we've trained over the years, people who want the quality education that we can get from the Columbia Business School, MIT, Cambridge Judge Business School, Harvard, the list goes on and on, but people who practically cannot get to um, the seats of these business schools, but want the quality of learning that we deliver. We'll be talking about three courses. I have the handbooks for two of them here. So it's taking this world quality learning and bringing it to your screen. Of course, under the COVID terms, this has never been more important as we are unable to travel. And you can see the range of our customers, people like yourselves, joining us from all corners of the planet. We have not got to where we are by chance. A huge amount of time and effort has gone into devising a formula for success, which we bring to our learners. And the way this works, it's a combination of ingredients. We wanna take the very best learning academic institutions with whom we partner. We bring in guest lecturers who are subject matter experts, indeed the faculty for the courses that we have here, who are world renowned. We want to break this into bite-sized learning. We're aware that over the nine months of this program that you're gonna be doing other things. You got a full-time job. You may have a lot of other commitments um, and you want to wrap around your life, this learning experience. We want to focus very much on peer-to-peer -peer learning. The feedback we get consistently shows that peer-to-peer -peer learning, group assignments and feedback that, we, that forms a core part of our program is baked into the design and delivery. We include simulations. This isn't just textbook stuff. If you want textbooks, go and buy them. Go and watch the videos on YouTube. This is the practical application of learning and we make this as actionable as possible and run a number of simulations to do that. Real world applications. We wanna make sure that as most of us, and I know this from my own personal experience as a professional, it's gotta work on a mobile phone because a lot of us are using mobiles throughout our busy lives and you don't get a qualification unless you deserve it. So. Our assignments are graded and evaluated and only those who hit the right quality threshold will succeed and get their qualification at the end of the program. This formula works and as a result, we are very proud to have completion rates of our courses north of 85%, which if you do your research, you'll find is rather unusual and hard earned because we spent a lot of time working on the formula that works. You'll also be joining a network of emeritus alumni um, who have been engaged in this experience for a number of years and who I know from being a course leader for four years, keep in contact with one another and with the emeritus group. We have a large number of people who do one course and then sign up and do another course. I was talking to one of them just an hour ago I trained her on one of the other programs and she's now re-signed with another emeritus course. So they like what they see and as a result, they come back for more. 
That's a very good sign of a successful experience in my view. You also have access and regrettably in these days, we're not face to face, we're doing everything online, but you'll be joining a large community of fellow learners and you'll be getting access to both assistance, but also uh, a startup corner. A number of entrepreneurs start their successful digital careers or build them thanks to the people they meet on these courses. So let's have a look then at the diploma itself and see what this includes. We've developed a nine month program here and we expect you to commit between four and six hours every week in a combination of live webinars, videos and graded assignments. We'll be covering the essentials of creating and building a digital business. The first six months are spent immersing you in three of our best-selling courses, our Digital Strategies for Business course, this one, Next Generation Enterprise, this one delivered in conjunction with Columbia Business School. The next one is our Digital Platform Strategy business, this one developed in partnership with the MIT. And the third one is Digital Marketing Strategy. I don't have the book in front of me here, but that's also delivered in partnership with Columbia Business School. Having done the first six months, we then apply the learnings to a three month capstone assignment. And back to my earlier point, this is where we apply the learnings from the principles of the first three courses, and we bring them into a live business challenge, a live business project, which encourages you to think about the application of these principles to a real life business challenge. Now, the world of online learning has changed very quickly and Emeritus has been very much at the forefront of this innovation. There are a combination of factors which make our business very successful and successful really means your success. If you're successful in your learning experiences, you're gonna come back and uh, get engaged in other courses we offer and you're gonna be more effective in your jobs. Whether you're delivering or wanting to take this program in order to get upskilled in a specific area which you can apply to your current role or maybe you want to apply for a new role in a new business maybe you want to switch from one career to another maybe you want to start a new business this is one of my favorite books who moved my cheese and it's a very easy and a very important message here about people who want to take a change in their life and the way to change is to get up to speed with the very latest best practice learning in order to take that brave move into starting up their own business. Something I did 10 years ago and something a number of people on these courses do themselves with the confidence that the learning they've had on the program is what they need to fast track their next stage in their career. So there's a lot of content as you would expect. We've got video lectures, pre-recorded video lectures, over 300 of them. We've got assignments, individual and group assignments, where we're asking you on the way through the program to put the learnings into practice and then to have our experts grade those and show that you have indeed captured the principles and you know how to apply them. We use a number of detailed case studies, Harvard Business Case Studies, uh, case studies from the leading organizations. I'll share you, you some examples of those in a moment. We have discussions. We have weekly office hour sessions where we are bringing in the course leader to host a conversation and answer any questions you have as you go through. From the other courses I'm running, these consistently are the very well regarded and well received parts of the learning journey. We have the simulations, and of course, we have the uh, capstone assignment and live online teaching sessions uh, throughout. 
The faculty, you're probably familiar with these two already. David Rogers, who is a, an extremely uh, articulate, very smart, and a charming person. I have to say, I've worked with David for a number of years, and uh, whether that is face-to-face, -face, we've done some work together in Malaysia uh, and Southeast Asia, uh, but also online. And he is the author of The Digital Playbook, and the network is your customer. He works as lead faculty with Columbia Business School. Jeff Parker, he's visiting scholar and research fellow, fellow at the MIT initiative on the digital economy. And it really, it's thanks to a lot of uh, Jeff Parker's work that the principles of digital platform businesses have been clearly articulated. And in his guide here, the platform revolution, Jeff explains step-by-step step the core principles. And these indeed are the building blocks in the platform module that is one of the three programs that forms the base learning for this course. So we are using a number of frameworks. The first key framework, and this is, this is a, a, a piece developed by uh, David Rogers, is the customer network framework. And it sits at the heart of his first thesis there around the customer and the customer network. And there are five key pillars to this. First of all, access. If we're going to be developing a relationship with a customer, we need to make sure that we understand who they are and we use the channels which they are already familiar with and using in order to develop a relationship with that customer. Second of all, having built that engagement across whichever platform, it could be a website, it could be a social channel, it could be a third party site, it could be an app, we need to engage them. How do we do that? We need to be delivering relevant, personalized and highly targeted content because every customer is different, whether you're B2C or B2B, and we focus on both. We understand that we need to have a B2B experience, a B2C experience, which engages customers very quickly. If it's a one size fits all approach, you're gonna be missing a big opportunity to connect and engage very quickly in a much more engaging manner. We then need to customize and it's very clear. And I see this through all the work I do, whether it's working with banks, working with telco businesses, working with utilities, businesses that have a vast amount of data about their customers, that we should be using that data to extract insights about the customers and then customize the experience. What does that mean? Well, that means the right messages. It means the right tone of voice, the right channels. And this is the most important thing. Jessica wants to sign up already. The next course starts on February the 14th or February the 16th. I'll get there in a moment, uh, but I'll come back to that in a little bit more detail in the logistics session at the end. So um, the next part after customizing is connecting. We need to make sure that we are using our customers in order to, um, to understand what we're presenting to them, but also we want them to become our advocates and to share this information with others. And we need to understand that this digital game is a team sport. It's not about us doing this in isolation. You think about all the big digital players. Take Amazon, take Uber, take Airbnb, and you'll realize that for each and every one of these businesses, their success is based on bringing different partners together onto a platform and sharing their knowledge, sharing their data in order to ex extract more value for all parties. That's the essence and at the heart of it requires collaboration and people working together and collaborating to meet shared goals, but also to extract shared insights. So going through the program, our approach is that we will help you to plan and execute a digital marketing strategy and give you a structured approach to do that. We'll be applying five principles of agile marketing modeling. 
an approach to making sure that your marketing is successful and we give you a framework with which to develop your marketing strategy. We understand that data sits at the heart of everything. Data, sometimes likened to the new oil, is where we can extract the most value. But like oil, taken from source, it's kind of hard to work with, so it needs refining. So we'll be looking at the different ways that we can build value templates from our data and use that, whether it's structured or unstructured data, to bring together uh, the most uh, value based on this valuable and ever-growing resource. We'll help with a business model map and help you understand how to build your competitive positioning and how competition or co-opetition, as we like to refer to it, can be leveraged in order to change your uh, competitive proposition and differentiate from the competition. We look at a value roadmap to help you reimagine your strategy. We explore uh, design thinking principles, convergent and divergent experimentation. As Jeff Bezos from Amazon again says, experimentation is the key to everything we do. Being wrong may hurt you a bit. Being slow will kill you. And I make no apology for saying that. If we're slow, if we miss opportunities, we open the door for another player to come in. And it's really very clear that it's better to experiment, to try new things out. And as long as we share the learnings, what works and what doesn't work, as long as we realize that the real ROI in digital innovation is learning which sometimes takes a little longer to realize than short-term profit, then that is a business that is going to be exciting for your employees, for your customers, and for your investors. You just look at the Wall Street stocks and you realize it's the businesses building a digital future which will have their earnings multiplied out, their valuation significantly ahead of traditional businesses which don't have a digital data-driven future at the heart of their model. And finally, disruption, talking of Google, talking of Amazon there, disruption. We'll talk about disruptive business models and how to analyze existing competitors, but also spot the disruptors. Who are they, where do they come from? And what is our strategy to deal with disruptors? Do we compete head to head? Do we collaborate to a point? Or do we develop a drafting off strategy where we learn from them, extract the, the insights and then move off and do our own thing separately? So a number of strategies for dealing with disruptors that come in there. Let me just see, do we have any questions so far? I'm seeing, Professor, your best practice mini guide for websites and apps was a great piece of work. Thank you very much for that. That's a, a piece I wrote for one of the other courses. Actually, that was a guest speaker slot. I deliver for the digital marketing strategy course. So it's likely, Faddy, we will meet again uh, as that as part of that module um, when you get to that in, in the journey, the third module in the program. Thank you for your kind words. Um, I've got a comment from uh, Srikanth here. How are you motivating students to complete the courses they undertake? Well, Srikanth, we do expect a certain amount of uh, self-starters and a real energy that you bring to it and we hope that you'll be sufficiently stimulated by the course and the course content that you are motivated to complete the program as indeed 85 percent of the people are who come on the course. Now the ones who don't complete maybe don't complete because they're finding it difficult to complete the assignments. Maybe with the challenges of the lockdown age they do need a little bit more time. Some of them may need to reschedule for a, to complete the course a bit later, but the majority are completing the course because they are really inspired by the learning and they get the necessary grades in order to get to that uh, completion and get their, their uh, qualification at the end. And I'll come on to that a bit later. So moving on from the framework, Let's have a look at some of the businesses that we focus on here. And there are some household names here and there's some true digital pioneers. Each of these featured in our program at some point. 
So I won't read every one out. I'll just take a couple of examples. Take Walmart, for example. I've done some really interesting work with Walmart. And we look at Walmart as a use case in the five domains of digital transformation here. Um, and clearly, Walmart's under a huge amount of pressure from Amazon. So how's Walmart reacted? Walmart's done a very good job in developing insights about their customers and turning those insights into truly customer first uh, experiences through a mobile app. One of the key features that I've worked on with Walmart is how they've been engaging with an audience of time poor and indeed in some cases cash poor customers who need to improve their health for their family, for themselves and developing a whole new experience around healthy eating, a healthy lifestyle, bringing in third party partners in nutrition, in pharmacy, and indeed in the insurance market. And that's been a core part of the repositioning of the Walmart business. Netflix, we all know Netflix and how Netflix has fundamentally disrupted the movie industry. How have they done that? By building a really easy user interface that's accessible on any device and using the intelligence from the data to build highly personalized recommendations and, and provide the most useful access and easy access to a huge range of content plays. Um, I don't know where to start talking about Google. Google features very prominently throughout. We look at Google also in the context of um, the, uh, the movie, the, the, the streaming business and how Brightcove and YouTube competed in order to uh, build uh, platforms which are able to launch and then scale over time based on human behavior and observations about usage patterns. How did SAP build an ecosystem which became self-sustaining and bring in partners to its platform which had been very successful uh, and saved having to invent when they could partner or acquire. And finally one of my favorites, the Coca-Cola story where we're seeing the vast majority of content produced by Coca-Cola is user generated rather than Coke needing to do it, allow everyone to have their version of Coca-Cola. And that's a core part of the digital marketing strategy program that we run. Coke is the brand that I focus my programs on within that course. So I'm just gonna stop here. We've got a question from Fernanda here. I have a question that is rather personal. Do you recommend this course, even if a student does not have much practical experience in digital, how much into the market does one need to be? Well, I would say uh, it's a great question. This course assumes some knowledge of digital. It assumes a certain level of business experience. I'll come on to that in a moment. But when it comes to detailed knowledge of these things, this is not a really detailed technical skills course. It's too short for that. We take a high level view, but the important thing is for you to understand the principles and understand which principles are important and why and how to apply them to a business challenge that you will be facing. Uh, the case studies mentioned here to be explained in the classes. Of course they will. I can only just touch the surface here, Srikanth, but there will be a lot more detail and these case studies will be examined in a lot more detail is indeed a number of our customers uh, require, and we have access to all the Harvard business cases, uh, which one would expect on a course of this quality, and we base our learnings on those. So in terms of the actual running order, um, what we do, we develop in the first six months, the program based on these courses that have been very carefully crafted. In the last three months, we build these into the capstone assignment. This is a three month assignment where we are asking you to build a business plan and apply the learnings from the first six months to a real life idea or challenge that you face. And the idea is that we want you to be strategizing a, a, and executing a plan being very clear about what you're gonna be measuring, the KPIs will be OKRs, and building a tangible roadmap that you can put into practice. So it's a consolidation job, and it's run, as you can see, over a series of dates there, 
across the three months that follow the first six months of the program. Um, we are expecting that you're not going to turn up on this course and spend nine months and get a qualification without that being very carefully monitored. And so we do have the team, the support team, and a team of experts who, is, who are grading uh, each and every one of the assignments that we set and indeed the capstone assignment. And we require you to hit a minimum of 4.67 out of 10 for the program, but for the capstone assignment, the group capstone assignment, that will be a requirement of getting five out of 10. So this is a really important point. Not everyone who shows up to the race gets the t-shirt. You really need to earn it. Um, benefits for you and benefits for your organization. I think it should be clear that for the organization and what we see is a number of very big businesses putting large numbers of people through our programs they want them to get access to world-class faculty and world-class ent uh, um, um, education here we give you exposure to uh, other employees in your own organization of course but also a chance to cross fertilize ideas with other people and other people who could be working in your geography or in your sector. And the real value here is getting people working together in these programs to, um, to apply their learnings and to do so in a way which is a, a very, um, a very customized version of applying the learnings rather than saying everyone has to do an assignment on this business. Uh, and if you're in a different sector, there's only a limited value there. So what we're saying, and, and I would say, Ernest, in response to your question, it's for you to select uh, which course, which uh, topics you wish to focus your uh, capstone on and to bring those uh, to the table. Of course, they need to be reviewed by the faculty uh, and we can't we can't accept everything. I mean, in certain industries, of course, we would not want to be supporting uh, each and every industry, but assuming it's a it's a business with a, a with a, a credible positioning and we're wanting to see that you can apply the learnings in a robust way then we're happy for you to be uh, having some a say in the way those are done now i had a question earlier there from um fernanda which was okay what level of knowledge do i need to bring to the table and the answer is we have a range of people on this program looking at previous participants. The average number of years of experience is 15. So we don't do this for grads. We want people and we need people to prove their academic uh, qualifications and language skills before they sign up. And we will monitor that. But we typically have 15 years experience, although you can see from the chart, uh, a number of people significantly more than that, 13%, more than 26 years of experience. A number of industries, you see top of the pile there, banking and finance, IT services, consulting, these are all healthcare, telecom, as you would expect, all areas that I must say I'm very much involved in myself, but there are other sectors also. And in terms of age of participants, let's not read too much into this, the average age 35, but we have participants who are, as you would expect, older and younger. And they represent a number of world-class organizations. And I won't read out every logo, but I think you can probably get a sense with American Express, Accenture, uh, Citibank, Capgemini, EY, Flipkart, um, P&G, Nestle, Pearson. So we've got some traditional bricks and mortar businesses and we've got some digital businesses there, Flipkart being a, a really impressive uh, organization. And we've got a number of consulting firms there. And I think if the consultants are going on this course, that tells you quite a bit about the quality of the course and why they would choose this course over others. Um, are the case studies mentioned here to be explained in the classes? Yes, I think if I've not answered that already, yes, we will be examining those in detail um live cases 
uh, do you choose? Yes, you will have the chance to choose there. Size of assignments, size of pages of the assignment. I don't have the answer to that, Mark, uh, the number of words, but the program support team can answer that question for you. Uh, groupings, will they be pre-assigned? Uh, not strictly, we'll make recommendations, but it's for you to, to find people that you want to work with. And it may be that for sector and geography and time zone reasons, you want to find people. So when you're doing your work collect collectively, you're in the same time zone and working also in the same industry. So you can uh, pull on one another's respective knowledge areas to make that as relevant as possible. So as we go through the program uh, today, it falls to me to, um, to, if I like, to turn the tables. I hope I've given you good reason to think that this is a very robust, a very credible and a very successful program from a learning perspective. And I hope that you feel this is worth you continuing to listen to the end of this uh, session today. But I should say that we do get a lot of demand for this course and there are only a finite number of people that we as course leaders can facilitate and can, can uh, run this program for. So there are certain things that we want to, uh, to expect from the people who come on the course. We need to run it at a level and at a speed. So uh, the, the more advanced and capable learners are going at the right speed for them rather than having to slow everything down for those with less experience. So let me just flag up here some of the things that we're looking for. We're looking for people with leadership initiative, people who are looking to do more than just turn up to work every day and do, uh, do the day to day. People who are looking to disrupt and to uh, find new and smart ways of doing things, leveraging technology in a clever way, building on this network concept, using data, to drive competitive advantage. We want people who can make things happen. It's not just about the theory and sitting there and understanding the frameworks, but it's understanding the practical barriers when it comes to bringing the digital skills into the real world. Changing the way that people think, changing the way you do things from having a very formal structured silo-based organization to an agile, fast moving, dynamic organization where people across the business get the chance to express their views and get involved. We need to cater for all sorts there. We need visionary people with a desire to shape the future, not just executors who do what they're told. We need to bring in a multicultural experience and be aware the difference is market by market. When I'm working in Saudi Arabia, the language I'm using, the references I'm using are gonna be different from if I'm doing work in, um, with clients in um, <clears throat> Costa Rica or in, um, in uh, Portugal or, or any other market. So there are cultural differences and we need to be sensitive and our course leaders have this expertise and this knowledge to make sure that we're multicultural in our delivery and in our references. I like to try and bring a lot of passion to what I do. And I hope that we're gonna be working with very passionate people who are subscribing to this course. And we need a minimum of three years of professional experience. So I'm um, just jumping back in. Um, I've got uh, a comment here from uh, Che. Uh, hang on, what does this say? Maybe that's, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, they get recorded and sent within 24 hours. So we do get the courses, are, the programs are indeed, the, the sessions, the, uh, the office hour sessions are recorded and shared to answer that question. Um, what time zone will the live classes be in? That's a great question. Uh, we tend to do the live classes at around this time. So it's the middle of the day for Europe which is later in the day for APAC, and it's the morning for the, the Americas. For one of the other courses I'm running, I do my office hour sessions at eight o'clock in the morning, UK time, which is a good time for the clients dialing in from the APAC region 
Uh, and so we managed to um, accommodate them. If we ran the office hours at the end of the day, it would be two in the morning. And while some of them do it, it's not particularly user friendly. So the office hour sessions will be optional to you depending on which time zone works best for you. Um, what are, I'm gonna come on to GPAs in a minute, Ernest, if I may. Uh, if I can't log into the live sessions, yes, Malini, great question. Everything's recorded, including this session. So if you can't join live, there's a recorded version. And of course you can then watch it at your convenience. You can pause it, you can take notes. You can then come back and interact after the session. Um, there will be videos, there will be live webinar classes, there are assignments, as we've said, AJ, so you can see through a range of different formats to suit different learner requirements. Um, so Malini had an earlier question, which I missed, which I will go up. Is the course only for CXOs because I'm a journalist and I have been bothered about the disruption in media for years? I'm keen on retooling and have done one course on digital marketing, but it seemed to skip the surface and I did enjoy it. My knowledge of business comes to reporting on it. Well, Malini, um, I am also a former journalist um, and I understand that there's been massive disruption in the media industry as a result of technology of the, uh, the, the digital giants. And you would be most welcome on the course. This isn't just for CXOs, it's for people from many different backgrounds. As long as you satisfy our requirements on the screen that you're looking at right here, and as long as you have certain other um, uh, uh, capabilities, which I'll share with you in a second, then you're absolutely the kind of person we're looking for. Um, three sectors, I've got a question here. What's the status of digital transformation in Africa? any work to point me to, any gaps in the education system, basic schooling. Okay, I'll come back to that in a moment. But, uh, the second question about education requirements, I'd say that I'm doing quite a lot of work uh, in the banking industry in Africa, and there will be references to businesses and case studies from different parts of the world. And when it comes to the capstone assignment, you will have a chance to work with others. And if your focus is on markets, on, on industries, on markets in the um, African continent, then we would encourage you to come together and develop your capstone on those, on those, uh, in those markets and in those sectors. So this answers a number of your questions now. What application requirements do we look for? We look for a minimum of three years experience as mentioned a moment ago. We look for a up-to-date resume or curriculum vitae, CV. We look for university transcripts and proof of your education qualifications. We look for people with a bachelor's or other degree um, from an institution where English is not the primary language. We require certain evidence of English as English competence as a business language. Uh, I'm no expert on T-O-E-F-L or on I-E-L-T-S, but the scores are on the screen there and the program support team will be happy to talk to you uh, about your specific um, qualifications as match those criteria. And if you've been working in any of the countries below in that paragraph, we would like to see uh, evidence of your employment there. We need you to complete the application form, which should be quite straightforward, and uh, a document proving your qualification already. So please take a screenshot of that screen uh, just to uh, make sure that you satisfy the requirements if any of those are relevant to you. Um, so Nicola, can the evidence be to have studied in a business school in English, having done that course at Capstone based on personal projects versus theory. Capstone based on very much personal, it's very applicable to the real world. Three months on a real business challenge there. And in terms of qualifications, can I refer you please to the program support team? Um, so no problem with those two questions wrapped into one. 
How can this be beneficial in the automotive industry? And how is this different from normal tradition ways of doing business? I mean, what I would say is the auto sector is fascinating. Just consider how much disruption the auto sector is going through right now. We have at the basic level, a question about whether people need their own car or not, which fundamentally challenges auto manufacturers to work out whether they should be building cars that can be included in a car pooling platform. Um, we need to think also about whether the manufacturer of the car itself, and I tell you this, working directly with VW Group, directly with, um, with BMW, whether what they're doing and innovating in terms of the product with an engine in it uh, with, that takes petrol is the future. Of course it's not. So we need battery powered cars. And that's where the vast investment's going now. And we need to figure out what Tesla's doing, what, what's good and what's not so good. And then we need to look about the future, auto-driven cars, self-driving cars, and where Google plays here and what the opportunities are for the car manufacturers, the OEMs to be playing in that space. This is a really massive topic and it will feature very much in the program that we're talking about here in the digital strategies for business module. But of course you could choose to select the car industry for your capstone also. So I hope that answers uh, your question, Ali. Um, I'm wanting to just finish the last slide here before we then take any additional questions that I may not have answered. I see there's some in the Q and A as well. In terms of the logistics, the program fee is 3,000 US dollars. This can be paid in two installments if required or one installment up front. And we give you deadlines there. The first installment due straight away before completion of application form. And then the second installment to be paid by the 16th of June. It can also be paid in three installments of uh, different amounts you can see on the screen there, both now and then the second, third by the 17th of May and the final third by the 15th of August. Uh, we do require an application fee of $50 for processing. And we've got a start date. Uh, and I go back to one of the very earlier questions. We were asked this question right at the beginning. Start date on the 16th of February. Uh, and an application open until the 14th of February. So this could be a very interesting Valentine's Day present for someone uh, you may want to put on the course, or of course, that's a deadline if you wish to take it for yourself. So the 14th and the 16th of February, respectively, for the application date and then the course commencement date. How do we do this? Well, there is David Rogers. And there is David Rogers on video on the Canvas platform. The Canvas platform I've worked with for many years now. It's, the, uh, it's a very intuitive, very user-friendly uh, web-enabled platform, which allows you to set up your own learning experience, your own learning journey, where you can pull down your modules, and each of the modules in the nine month program or the six month program and then instructions for the three month capstone will be hosted here. The people on the course, your fellow learners, so you can reach out to them. There's an inbox function which allows you to set up groups or allows us to set up groups in which you belong for you to communicate with the faculty and for you to communicate with one another. There's a discussion forum which allows us to start and build on ideas and discussions from one another. This is where the peer-to-peer -peer learning really happens very well. We also make announcements, we run quizzes, we run um, um, uh, simulations, we have assignments, we have uh, all other forms of interaction hosted on this platform. This saves all sorts of time with emails going out outside the platform, we contain all the dialogue, all the content, all the materials, loading up assignments in a single place, a platform which can be accessed on a mobile via the uh, iTunes or Google Play app stores. 
and it can be accessed both for the learner and of course the people like us, the course leaders, to assess what's going on, respond to questions in a timely manner, and we have very uh, sophisticated ways to track and respond to those queries. At the end of it, if you get the right qualification, you'll wind up with one of these. Now the certificate uh, is valuable, and Jessica, that's a good question. Um, should you be getting the qualification? What should you be doing with it? I think it really depends for a lot of people. The qualification's uh, important for their own sense of self-esteem. Uh, I got that qualification. It gives them the confidence to go into their next stage in their career. For some of them, it's a very useful way to get promoted, to get a pay rise. For some of them, a great way to get another job. And for some, a badge of honor, which allows them to share with other classmates. I have facilitated many, many programs on this, uh, on, on the Emeritus platform, where we see very vibrant uh, LinkedIn groups. We see very active Canvas and WhatsApp groups all spun up from the dialogue people have, the, the dialogue they have, they start on these journeys, and then they take that to their own uh, um, communities having completed the learning. So we like the comms to be held within the platform during the course, but there's nothing to stop you setting up your own group if you wish to do so, or if your course leader wishes to do so, to keep that dialogue going uh, outside of the platform. Um, I'd like to just come back now, if I may, to any questions which I've not answered so far. And I'm aware we've had a very uh, active number of people. It's great to see that your questions are coming thick and fast here. And it's a very good sign for me as a course leader that we've got a very interactive group who I hope will be bringing the same level of curiosity and questioning to, um, to the course itself. So if I can just ask if the program support team have any uh, any particular questions they wish to flag up. And if you wish to talk, I'm very keen to get people talking and not just to be the only one, I need a glass of water sitting here and I'm very thirsty. So I'm just gonna go to uh, the, the, the q and A. I I see that Mel raised her hand. So Mel, I'm gonna unmute you and invite you to talk. Mel, over to you. Yes, Mel, you're good to talk. If you wish to, Mel, let's hear your question. I see Mel sitting there, but I didn't see Mel talking. So let's get another hand raised. So we've got Vina. Vina, over to you. Feel free to talk, Vina, if you want to unmute yourself. Vina's not talking either. So maybe I can just make sure program support. Can you ensure that all participants are free to talk, please? Uh, we've got a question from Malini. Okay, this is a bit odd. I do like to get people talking. Uh, so hmm, this is uh, curious. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Malini, good to have you with us. How can I help? Hi, I'm only concerned about one thing that, um, as I said, that I don't have a business degree and my knowledge of business and understanding of sectors comes from reporting on it. I, I haven't worked with spreadsheets, etc., other than at a very basic level, understanding earnings of companies, etc. So my only concern is that is the, and I don't have a degree in marketing either, other than the uh, diploma course I have done in the last six months during the pandemic on digital marketing, uh, which seemed to skim uh, through a lot of topics, whether it was da understanding data analytics, etc., to un you know whether your campaigns have worked or not. Even those who specialize in marketing were at a loss at a couple of um, times. So I'm just worried about the fact that uh, will that um, lack of qualification or lack of a business uh, school degree come in the way of this program because I read a lot, I report on a lot of subjects and I'm interested in, uh, in this subject. Um, uh, so therefore I really want to do the course, but 
I don't want to discover that I'm ill-equipped because I don't have a, a B school degree. So that's that's the only question that I have. That's a great question, Malini. And, and my response would be, this is a business school degree. So I, I don't see that that is a prerequisite. We ask for three years worth of business experience at a minimum. The fact that you're a journalist indicates that you will have an active questioning mind, which is a really important thing to bring to this course. And the fact that you're a journalist indicates that you'll be very good at articulating your views in writing, which again is going to be important for the assignments. Uh, it would be, you may be surprised how many people really struggle to write in a way that you and I as journalists are able to do. So I wouldn't say that your lack of business school degree should in prevent you from joining the course, but I would say, please complete the application uh, form, submit it to program support, and they'll be able to uh, address this issue directly if there are any specific areas of concern. But based on what you've said, I would have no doubt that you'd be a very good candidate for this program. I have already submitted the form and I've paid the uh, application fee as well. Uh, one last question I have is that, um, so the course will run for six months and then three months will be no lectures and no um, um, interaction, just work on the project. Have I got that right? Yeah, but you will be checking in with the faculty on a regular basis during those three months. And so it's not like you're left on your own. You will be talking to faculty although there won't be the same schedule of webinars uh, and um, uh, live sessions that you have in the early stages of the program. Sorry, I said last question, but this truly is the last one. So the course I've done in India uh, in the last six months is on digital marketing from a uh, leading uh, marketing and advertising school in India. Um, the capstone project, it required, uh, you know, the whole group to be split into various groups. Uh, most groups did not sort of congregate and come together till the 11th hour and we are supposed to submit the capstone project by 31st of January. I worked on mine much ahead of anybody else because I was, I'm the paranoid sort and the groups didn't come together very well because there were different people holidaying, traveling, year end, etc. Yeah. Uh, it became an issue for many people like us because who don't like leaving things to the 11th hour, not working and following a deadline, not a stickler yeah. for, you know, following process. Uh, what happens when the group is disjointed and working in well, different okay. countries? Well, okay, so, so my, my, my answer to you, and I'd like to take some more questions because we've got a number of people with their hand raised. So just quickly, Sorry. if I may, it's really for you in your group to find like-minded people who don't like to leave things to the last minute and to organize your planning and your uh, preparation of the assignment uh, in the way that you wish to do. Now, you know, I can't control that. It's for you to find like-minded people, prepare thoroughly and make sure you don't leave things to the last minute. So I hope that answers your question, Malini. Let me yes, now move on if I may. You're very welcome. So if I can move on to um, Vina, if you wish to, Vina, you are good to talk now. Uh, hi, Rob, can you hear me? I, yes, Vina. Great. Uh, this is a question a few others have already uh, covered, but I think it's um, going to help the rest of them too. Um, the kind of technologies we did not cover, really speaking, it was an overview and that was great. Thank you. But some of the technologies that I'd like to understand are being covered here. Um, uh, one of them is digital marketing, of course, but the rest of them, like, you know, some of them have already pointed out AWS, blockchain, IoT, the cloud. Is there, is there any kind of um, uh, sort of uh, focused discussions or lectures or case studies that are going to cover these technologies as well? Yeah, I mean, all of these technologies uh, are covered in the platform program. Um, just looking at the uh, the detailed agenda here, and please go online and have a look for yourself, but you'll see that technology and use of technology is an absolute building block for any digital business. Mm -hmm. And we must understand what machine learning and AI mean to any organization. We must understand how to use a uh, big query and, and data extraction and processing tools we must understand what blockchain is in order to 
um, move beyond our traditional way of capturing and using data. The implications on the banking sector and of course so many others are very widespread and these technologies are absolutely critical to the learning experience and you'll be covering those in the strategies, digital strategies and also in the platform component of the course. And we want to see evidence that you've understood and are applying those in your capstone. Oh, great. That's, that's I think, covering most of it because I come with a 20 plus years of digital background. So this yep. sort of makes me comfortable join. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you should, be, you should be feeling that when you're doing your capstone, you're working with like-minded people with similar experience. So you can move as fast as you all go without having to slow down for those who maybe are not so familiar with the principles. So with that, may I move on to Maria? A question from Maria, Thank please. You. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Maria, over to you. Hello? Yes, Maria, how can I help you? Um, yes. Um, first of all, thank you for all the information. The course sounds really, really amazing. But I, I was wondering regarding the, the title we will be getting uh, at the end of the course. Um, how is a title uh, gotten from Emeritus uh, in collaboration with Columbia and MIT um, seen to, to the eyes of employers uh, as, as in, in, like, in comparison to a title received from Columbia Business School or MIT themselves? Like, okay, is I mean, it that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, I think you should say that that if you just look at the certificate, and I've just put it back on the screen here, Maria, you can see there's an MIT logo on there. This is MIT mm -hmm. content that's delivered, and it's delivered with permission of MIT. The brilliant uh, business idea that the founders of Emeritus came up with is to take MIT and Columbia and Harvard and NCAD and Cambridge and all the other business schools to take their content and deliver it online it's the same content, it's just delivered in a different way. So I think you can put your hand on your heart, Maria, and say, yes, I've got a qualification from the MIT without having to worry about emeritus somehow being uh, in any way diluting that experience down. The fact is you can't go to Boston in Massachusetts and study because you can't even get on a plane these days. This yeah, is the yeah, best. For sure. yeah. This is the best you can get. By all means, ask that question of the program support team and uh, see what they say. But I think you'll get a similar answer. Um, thank you, thank I, you very much. Hey, you're very welcome, Maria. Good question. If I can come back to, uh, uh, who else has got their hand up? Vikas, uh, Vikas, over to you, please. You're good to talk. Yeah, hi, Rob. Um, I hope hi you there. can hear me. Yes, yeah. I can hear you. So, so Rob, uh, I, can, I come from a, a digital background, but more from a delivery and operations perspective. But what I see is that this course is more towards the marketing perspective. So if I don't want to go towards the marketing side and want to remain uh, in, de in delivery and operations side so as to leverage my previous experience, is there a possibility that I can take more of a uh, right module rather than the market mod marketing module? If I take any other module or if I can mix and match the module or something of that? That's a great question. And the way that this course is designed, Vikas, is that we've combined these three courses together to give you the diploma. Yeah. What you yeah. can do is you can book any one of the courses separately and we are running the, the, uh, the digital marketing course, the digital strategy course and the platform course separately. So if you don't want the marketing bit, no problem. Yeah just sign up for the strategy course and the platform course, and you won't be getting the uh, marketing program. That said, you also will not get the uh, capstone assignment because that's delivered as part of the uh, broader program here. So you can mix and match and take the bits that you want, but you won't get this qualification. You'll get a different certificate for the corresponding course. All right, yeah, thank you so much. No, you're very welcome. Okay, so I'll take, it's 34 minutes past, I'm aware we are over time, but let me just quickly take another question from, um, we've had Vina, we've had, <coughs> anyone else got any questions? 
anyone else got any questions? Perhaps program support, you can uh, point to any others. I'm not seeing any more. Oh, Carmen, Carmen, over to you. Carmen Morales. Yes, yes, Carmen, can you hear yes, me? Carmen. Yes, I can, Carmen. What's your question? Okay, I just, I just want to know if, I, I didn't set my application yet, but I would like right to know if if the the subject about the English form, uh, if I have the TOEFL or I don't have it, or if I have any experience in the in other kind of universities, it is a fact important fact to be part of this program or not. Um, so let me, I, I'm not sure if I understood the question there. Do you mind repeating the question? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I would like to know if the experience about English, English knowledge, it is so important. I mean, if I have the TOEFL title or another, another title about it, TOEFL, if I have it or not, it is important to, to be part of the program or not. Yeah, okay, so, so I think I mentioned, Carmen, if you, if you look, uh, you'll see, uh, I mentioned the English language uh, skills we require. Um, we've got a certain, we want, as all of the courses delivered in English language, we want to make sure that everyone has a proficiency uh, in order to keep up with the program. So, uh, can yes, I- Yes, I know. I, I'm, I'm actually, I have the proficiency in English language. My, I'm in I'm international relations proficiency, but I don't have the TOEFL title, you know? So okay, can I, I suggest, I, I, I'm not the best person to answer this question. Can I suggest you speak to program support and they'll be able to advise you on um, whether your qualification is is good to qualify, but I hope it would be. Okay, thank you. I You're understand. welcome. Thank you. Okay, so um, can I just check? Are there any final questions before we close the session today? Um, okay, so I think we've got um, I think we've got the answer there, uh, Srikanth. It's not for me to determine the layout of the certificate. It is what it is. And um, I think we need to accept that there are certain requirements that the business schools have. And the fact that they have a relationship with uh, Emeritus is as a trusted long-term partner. And a number of things have been very carefully thought through, including the selection of courses and the way in which the qualifications and certificates are designed. So. I hope, uh, Sir Kant, that answers your question. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for your time. I would like to thank the program support team for inviting me to deliver this session. I hope very much we'll be seeing you on the course and I wish you uh, a very good day and uh, keep safe. And I hope that you found this a useful session. And with that, I'll now close the session.